Welcome back everyone. Previously, we introduced the Five Things video series where we spoke about everything offshore and we covered all of our topics in five simple points. As a refresher, we spoke about the case for offshore. Why should anyone consider investing offshore? We spoke about the tax implications of going offshore and we spoke about the practicalities of actually externalizing your money and taking it offshore. In the second series, the first episode, we're really excited to bring some practical examples to what going offshore really means. Practically, from a lifestyle perspective, what are some of the options and what are some of the solutions that our clients and our investors need to look at when going offshore? Today, we discover a really interesting topic and quite a, an increasing trend that we're seeing in South Africa, and that is a lot of our clients looking for some help as they consider sending their kids overseas to study for many reasons. And we've got in studio Brandon Naidu. Brandon, welcome again. And we're going to talk about um, studying offshore. But let's start with the first question. How do you see this trend um, picking up and why do you see uh, you know, the trend offshore picking up? Thanks, Vamita. It's great to be back with you uh, to do the Five Things video series. I think you're right. This trend is set to continue. Um, I mean, research shows us that the International Education Association of South Africa talks about more than 12,000 people currently studying abroad. And even more recent research done by, by Brand Maps, as an example, says that over 1.2 million people are actually considering it right now. So the numbers clearly show us that this trend is set to continue. And that's naturally going to place uh, an additional financial burden upon parents, upon family units and households. And that's they need to think about educating your child, which hopefully everyone is currently thinking about in a South African context. But we're just adding on a layer of complexity because now we're, we're talking about a foreign jurisdiction where currency comes into the conversation as well. So totally agree the trend is set to continue. And I think financial advisors have got a massive role to play uh, along with the parents in this journey and having this conversation about how best to plan and invest towards your child's future education. Yeah, I mean, it is quite a, you know, an interesting topic. And certainly, I mean, for the type of investor that hasn't had, you know, any kind of exposure to any kind of offshore region for long periods of time, you can imagine, I mean, there's quite a lot of research um, that has to go into, you know, something like this, particularly if you're letting your kids study offshore and you don't have access um, to them across the geographies often. What type of research do you recommend um, clients go through before making such a big decision? I suppose it comes down to what type of research would you do with a traditional investment? You'd ensure your due, due diligence is done in terms of uh, what investment vehicle you're using, what's your goals, what's your objectives, what are, you, what are you really investing towards? But the added complexity here is when we're talking about education and specifically education abroad, the type of research you, you would need to do is research on that specific country, on that specific state. If, if we're going to that level, we need to go a bit deeper into a specific field of study that you're looking at. So I suppose that's the lens that you, you need to look through. And what complicates it a little bit in South Africa is that we've got various, let me call them education systems. Right. So you've got the National Senior Certificate or, or NSC, and that's split up into CAPS, but mostly your, your public schools follow. And then you've got the IEB or the Independent Examination Board, which your private schools follow. Um, and then you've got Cambridge as well. So what entrance exams would you need to complete before going to study abroad? Well, that's a question mark, and it depends on what type of education system did you follow in South Africa. And all of these are, are types of things that you would need to research before making that final decision on this is the institution and this is the field of study. Thank you, Brandon. I mean, it does sound really complex, and it does sound like um, clients out there would need some kind of partnership to help them with that. And I mean, it goes without saying is while you're busy with all of these other complexities, you've also got to make sure that the solution you're putting in place helps um, your kid out there who's mm -hmm. going to have to fend for themselves get access to liquid money at any point in time. But absolutely. What are some of the benefits? Um, you know, other than, I mean, I guess it is quite jarring, but the world is becoming a, a smaller place. What are some of the benefits of studying offshore? Sure. I think you've, you've touched on an important point there. The world is becoming a smaller place. So you find students or, or younger people looking to expand their horizons and get more comfortable with this smaller place. Uh, you want to build international networks. You want to really put yourself out there and test yourself against, let me call it, the best in the world, right? And there's also cultural benefits to exposing yourself to to the big bad world that's that's out there. And and I suppose that's another benefit that you could consider under uh, education that's being done offshore. And then these global employers, right? 
they are more likely to to pick up a student or to employ a student who comes from a, a world-renowned institution than an institution in South Africa. Now, that's not to say that South Africa does not have some fantastic tertiary institutions. I think we all know the big names that are out there and they've been doing a phenomenal job over a number of years. It's just when you're in this international landscape and, and specific professions, of course, uh, would, would try and, and pick students from specific universities. And I think that's where people who have a goal of being um, being in a specific field would be looking at a global education. And I think you picked on an important point, which is they are certainly, you know, very big cultural differences. I know South Africans come with their own specific culture and it only becomes, you know, apparent when you're out there um, and then you realize how African we really are. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, what type of advice would you give, you know, a parent considering, you know, getting their kids ready for, you know, these big adjustments, particularly the cultural adjustments from South Africa into, you know, another another space out there? Sure, I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but I suppose research, research into customs and traditions that are that are followed in the country that you're you're moving into would be a great point to start. Language becomes the the easiest one, I suppose, because if you can overcome the language barrier, it should really sort of integrate you into the people that that you will be surrounded by. But I suppose to keep this really simple, I would say be open-minded and be respectful. And if you've got that open-mindedness and you are respectful, I think it'll stand you in good stead. I found a, another advantage quite interestingly as I was thinking about this topic and you know I've been delving into some of these questions myself mm -hmm. is when you find partners particularly financial partners that have been dealing with this with multiple families you actually find you know a South African audience can be a lot easier to locate in certain geographies not all the time but it certainly does open your network to find you know maybe expats that you know that happen to be in in the country of choice or certainly other students that might be from the country studying there as well and I find that opens the doorway for bigger networks mm -hmm. um, you know in places that you know sometimes you wouldn't necessarily think you would find you know um, you know other South Africans and certainly those brotherhoods and sisterhoods uh, you know certainly do help but thank you Brandon and thank you so much for your words of wisdom I think it's going to be really helpful for any investor out there thinking about well what are the next steps to take your kids um, offshore what are some of the considerations to make and there are broader considerations than just financial considerations I think the message that we would like to land is the last thing you need to worry about is the financial considerations because we've got that covered for you. And hopefully in the second season of our Going Global series, you will find some of our practical tips to help you understand some of the nuances that you need to understand. And hopefully we're giving you a little bit more assurance that with Liberty and our Going Global series and our global offshore solutions, that we've got simple, accessible offshore solutions for you to consider. However, there are some other considerations as it relates to lifestyle impacts and hoping this practical series will help you with that. Thank you.